Trey Yinks, live on the ground in Israel with the very latest. Trey. Todd Carly, good morning. Overnight, the Israelis continued their airstrikes against targets along the Gaza Strip, trying to take out as many Hamas commanders as possible. We understand they are working day and night to try and lay the groundwork for the expected operation into Gaza. But let me just take you through what it was like overnight. We were reporting along the border. We heard some small arms fire near the beach of Zakim that sits just between Israel and Gaza. The Israeli military then fired flares overhead. And we've since learned that at least two Hamas Hamas militants were killed in an infiltration attempt by sea, by the Mediterranean Sea. Hamas divers are trying to get into Israeli territory. And this just gives you a sense of the different ways that Hamas is trying to target Israel as this war enters its 18th day. Now, we do know rocket fire has continued despite the airstrikes that are ongoing. And additionally, there has been some developments in the West Bank, where overnight the Israelis used a drone to take out a cell of militants, killing at least three Palestinians. I do want to draw your attention, though, to the northern border with Lebanon, where the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah continues to fire on Israeli territory. We do know today there's been at least one anti tank guided missile attack and the Israelis are responding. So there is a southern and northern front, the developments and the West Bank, and of course the regional tension over concerns that Iranian proxies could get more directly involved. Todd, Carly? Yeah, and Trey, uh, yesterday President Biden spoke on the phone with Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, and both of them uh, decided to agree to at least try to prevent the escalation of this conflict. And that does seem significant considering Saudi Arabia and Iran recently normalized relations. So do you think that because of that, Saudi Arabia would have more sway with Iran on decisions they make on whether or not to escalate things in the region? They certainly would have more sway than the United States or Israel, and it is of note that they had this conversation, President Biden and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, because there was this question about what happens to the peace talks and the normalization conversations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And so while the factor of Gaza may be different in all of this, it does appear that in the long term they still will try to normalize ties because Saudi Arabia sees Israel as the same way that the United Arab Emirates sees Israel, as, as Morocco and, and Bahrain, these other countries that have normalized ties as well. They see opportunity in terms of economic development and tourism. And so certainly this massacre and the war that is erupting right now may not totally destroy the prospect of normalization with Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Trey, I want to focus on this attempt to invade by sea that you mentioned. Many security experts are calling it a basic suicide mission in light of the fact that the IDF is so on alert for anything right now. So knowing the region as well as you do, knowing how infiltrations can happen and can be successful, how they can also not be successful, what was the point of an attempted invasion like this, do you think? It was absolutely a suicide mission. The Israelis have locked down the beach, the sea. They have naval ships off the coast of Gaza and Israel. They've got infantry troops along the northern part of the Gaza Strip. So trying to infiltrate this deep into the war doesn't make a lot of sense. But Neither did the massacre against the community here in southern Israel. Hamas has a unit called the Frogman Unit, and they are trained scuba divers who can try to get into Israeli territory in the Mediterranean. They also will try to attack the Israelis on the beach at Zakim. But like I said, this deep into the war, it is hard to wrap your mind around what the, the purpose of that might, may have been. But it's not the only time that Hamas and Islamic Jihad militants have tried to attack Israel from the ground or sea. And in the past, we've seen video published by the Israelis of the Navy simply firing into the water and killing any of the militants there. Yeah, and this news that the Pentagon is planning, still in the planning phases, but uh, good news nonetheless that the Pentagon is planning to send two U.S. drone systems to Israel. That's got to be welcome news for Israel, considering one of the major concerns is that their Iron Dome system could get... Uh, you know, overwhelmed by missile strikes, especially if Hezbollah gets involved in this war? Yeah, Israel needs all the air defense support it can get, understanding that Gaza is not the real threat. They have the Iron Dome batteries here in the south that are deployed and can intercept that fire coming from Hamas and Islamic Jihad. Some of it does slip through, but the majority of it is intercepted. It's the north they're worried about. They're worried about the precision-guided missiles that have been smuggled from Iran through Iraq, through Syria, into Lebanon, into the southern part of that country, and are currently being aimed at Israel by the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of missiles. That, according to the former defense minister, Benny Gantz. 
And we've seen the targets the Israelis have picked out. It's not just command centers, but also the positions where they would fire these missiles and ultimately rockets from. But the concern is the north, and that's part of the reason that the United States and Israel's western allies are trying to get as much military aid here as possible. Trey Inks with the sound of building and or rebuilding behind him. It just shows the resiliency of the Israeli people. Trey, we thank you as always.